I can't have one. Why? How much a board player can make? Who keeps messing with our flag? I forgot. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda, which includes minutes from the March 18th meeting, March 20th meeting, and the April 3rd meeting, Bank Reconciliation Report, General Trekking, Money Market, CD, Bond Account, High School, Middle School Activities, Cash Receipts, DAP Checklisting, April Payroll, and the Purchases. Any discussion and all that? Student success. Oh, that's right. Is that One of our projects. Another project we did is that I will create an artwork showing a certain sense of the solar system. Two 
what did you do? What I did is I made the five dwarf planets. Wanna show them your dwarf planets? To the board members. <laughs> I won't tell Mrs. Effery. There's a lot of food in steam room if you don't eat it. <laughs> and then for art, we did a little chalk drawing of our solar eclipse for today. And so they did their own as well. Right? And then for steam, we did a paper circuit of the solar eclipse, getting ready for the solar eclipse today. You want to show them your solar eclipse? And then we got lucky, and we're really, really <coughs> grateful that everyone in the school was provided with the solar eclipse glasses, so the whole school was able to go out there and <coughs> experience that. And that's what we have received, and art. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> 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 You guys have heard it before at the middle school, um, and they have just learned it along with We Will Rock You and some other songs, but they kind of go a big color for you guys today.
So this is in credit box. And um, Amara, do you want to show them how it works?
Mrs. Aparicio, Mrs. Browning, Ms. Rea, and Mr. Nanha. And so, uh, Cottonwood Coffee House, we'd like to thank them for once again contributing the gift cards and stuff for the Spartan Pride Award winner. And the April Spartan Pride Award winner was Ms. Rea. So, congratulations. Woo! So, uh, I'll jump back over here, sorry. Uh, Raina is someone who is willing to do whatever she can for whoever, no matter if it is something that is under her job description or just something someone has asked her. She is someone both staff and students go to with questions or a quick chat about different topics. Ms. Royer is also always looking out for the well-being of the school district and ways to improve it for the people who work in the district. She wants to give them the best experience. Raina is also a learner and is always learning new things about different topics that, that are not only going to make her better, but also improve the experience for the employees of USD 216. She has great pride in the district and wants it to be a place everyone is proud of. So, congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Um, very much will take action later. Standard for grading presentation. <coughs> You guys have that on you, so you have it on your computer, so if you want to follow along on there, we're not going to project it, so you can just follow along on there. So I just want to kind of give you guys an update of kind of where we're at with our implementation of center space grading for the high school and middle school. So if you look at the second slide, one of the first things we did in August when Crystal Simons came in to meet with our staff, we came up with a three-phase implementation plan. Uh, phase one is where they really looked at the standards. We created proficiency scales, and we kind of worked on some pacing guides. Um, recently, we just talked about like how we would manage missing work, uh, late work, retakes, how we would talk about behavior in terms of how that affects grades, and then some conversion stuff, conversion charts. So taking the center space grading and being able to convert it into a letter grade. Um, that's kind of what we've been working on recently. Phase two is kind of with the universal implementation where we actually will implement it in our building um, and the communication part of it. You know, communicating it to you guys as the Board of Education, communicating it to our stakeholders, our parents, our students. Um, that's kind of the next steps for us. Uh, right now we are in phase two of it. Um, some of the things that we have planned out for the rest of the year is we're going to make some videos kind of discussing, just introducing center space grading that we'll get out on our social media so parents kind of get an idea of the direction we're going. And then we'll kind of continue with that then in August when we come back. We'll hold some parent nights to where we'll have parents come in. We'll go over this in more detail with parents um, so that they're familiar with it. And then we'll slowly implement it and go over it with students as well so that when everybody comes back in August, um, they'll have an idea of why we're doing this, how it's going to work, and we really put a lot of work into it this year, and we've gone slow through the process just to make sure that we're doing it correctly and not just jumping in and then not making the correct, um, not making the correct steps that need to be taken for it to be successful. And then phase three will just be the continuation, going back and looking at our standards and just continuing with that revision, any changes that need to be made. So it's not just we start it and we continue it. It's, we, we will constantly go back and try to make it better, try to see ways that we can improve it so that our students are successful in everything that we do. The next slide, what does a grade represent? If you look at that report card, that's the report card that I grew up with. I'm sure many of you grew up with it, but what does it actually tell you? It doesn't really tell you what the student knows. Like for example, the algebra, it tells you that they got a 90% but it's not specific. It doesn't tell you 
what they really know. It doesn't really tell you what's in that grade. Was it extra credit? Was there behavior in that grade? Or is it just strictly the standards of what they're going over? So we're going to try to get away from that and be more thorough and more just letting you know as parents what your student actually knows. Be more specific about what's happening. The next slide talks about what a definition of a grade should be. One of the things we talked about recently is, as a staff, at one of our last PD days on Fridays, we talked about what is a grade and what it should mean. And this is what we want it to be as we move forward. We want it to be a grade, should be a system of communication of what the student actually knows. It should, not, it should measure results, not effort, and it should not be based on behavior shown by the student. That's what we want our grades to represent beginning next year when we start this in August. Some common grading practices. This is what have grades been based on in the past, and I'll go into more detail later on in the presentation, but zeros, late work, attendance has played a part in grades, participation, uh, behavior. We'll talk about what our relearning and reassessing plan will be look like, and then extra credit. Those are all things that grades have been based on and have been common grading practices in the past. One of the things that we want to eliminate is the use of zeros. We want to try to, instead of putting zeros in the grade book, <coughs> mark it as incomplete or have no mark in there. Zeros don't help create student responsibility. A lot of times they demotivate the student, they make them not want to work hard. So by hopefully marking incomplete or with a no mark, it just shows that we need to hopefully take away the effects of a zero because a student might know what's going on in the class. They might understand the standards, they might understand what's going on, but they're just not motivated. So we need to find ways to motivate them and giving them zeros doesn't really motivate many of the students that we have. We want to develop learners who will complete work and are intrinsic motivated. We want them to be motivated, self-motivated, not based off of threat of consequence, not based off the threat of receiving a zero. And we want them to we want to provide feedback on their learning. Let them know what they're learning. Let them know how they're doing with each standard that we work through. On the next slide, it talks about separating what students know from how they behave. A lot of times, we'll combine behavior in with the grade, and that doesn't really give you a good idea of what the student actually knows. So by combining those results, they're inaccurate. It doesn't show you truly what a student knows. So one of the things that we're looking at starting next fall is we will manage student behavior we're gonna kind of put this into our weekly eligibility policy, and you can kind of see the chart on that slide. So anytime a student receives a one in any of their classes, they become ineligible for that week, okay? Because one is unsatisfactory. So their expectations are they assume responsibility for their learning, they pay attention in class, they use their time wisely, and they become responsible for their behavior. If they receive a one in any of those from their teachers, they would become ineligible for that one week. Now at any point, the teacher has the right, they reserve the right to move them up. So they could say they have, you know, maybe they turned something in or they had a great class where they paid attention. The, the teacher has the right to move them up before that week is up. If they have two or more ones in a week, they would be put on a two week probation period. And what would happen is the teachers will be in teams, probably teams of three, and this will be done on Fridays, or not Fridays, on Thursdays before they leave, and then it will be in effect from Monday through Thursday of the following week. And this is something that we've kind of worked on in the past year to, to make sure it's right before we implement it, but this will hold the kids more accountable for the behaviors in class. Then the next part talks about what our grading rubric will look like with our standards-based grading. This is something that the staff and I worked on throughout the course of this past year. Um, if they receive a four, that means they're mastery. They know 
the material well and they can teach it to someone. That's basically what we look for with mastery. Then the next one is 3.5, which is approaching mastery. They know it well enough to do it on their own would be approaching mastery. A three would be proficient. That is where they, they can do it, but they might make some mistakes. A two would be approaching proficiency. This is the, where they, they know the basics of what they're supposed to do, but we need to kind of give them some extra help. And then they're very inconsistent with what they're working on. And then a one is they're developing an understanding of the material. So that's kind of the direction we'll be going next year with our grading policy. It'll be, as they work through the standards, it would it'd be based off of a four, 3.5, a three, a two, and then a one grading rubric that they will be graded on as they go through and work through the standards. So then another big part of standards-based grading is the reassessment. So how will the reassessment look for the standards for the students? One of the first things that they'll have to do, if they receive a two or below, the student will be required to reassess on that standard. Now, a student can choose to reassess at any time, but if it's a two or below, they would be required. And there's certain steps that they have to do before they can reassess. The first thing is they will have to complete the checklist that you can kind of see in the presentation. They will fill this out and go over it with the, their teacher. So they'll have to find time to meet with that teacher and go over the different questions on here and making sure that they have, basically they, that they turn in their reassessment work. The teacher will give them and reassign some things for them to work on. They can either work on that with the teacher, maybe the teacher will work on them one-on-one, -on -one, or it might be to where they work on it on their own. And then once they have completed all the extra practice, then they will kind of, again, meet with that teacher and they'll go through and they'll set up a reassessment time. And we hope to have some of that reassessment time built into our schedule. Um, we are in the process of finishing up our schedule for next year and I'll have that for you next month. So once they complete the um, checklist, then if you go to the next slide, once they finish that and they reassess, then they will go on the, and they'll complete a reflection part. So once they reassess it, and they retake the assessment once again, and it's graded again, then they will go through and fill out this reflection sheet, and they'll go over it with the teacher once again, just looking at what they feel are areas of strength and areas that they need improvement on. And then they'll discuss that and meet with the teacher and talk about those things. Next one talks about extra credit and retakes. Again, with the reassessment, students are allowed to reassess three times. So they can reassess three times for any given standard. Um, basically, what they have to do is they have to prove that they are ready to reassess. So they just can't go and tell the teacher, hey, I'm ready to reassess. They have to go through the steps. They have to go through and fill out the different forms and meet with the teacher and make sure that they are ready so that it's not just they do it and they're done. They have to go through and make sure that the additional work and preparation is done before they reassess. So that kind of takes a difference. So we are kind of going away from extra credit because extra credit really doesn't tell how really what the student knows. It's kind of done to kind of help boost the grade up where if we do this retake and the reassess, it's gonna show more of what the students actually know rather than just getting extra credit to kind of improve their grade. And then one of the last things that I'll talk about is converting the letter grade, converting to a letter grade or percentage. So taking those ones, the twos, the threes, and converting them into a percentage like the students have now. So what you do is we would average the different grades that have been assigned for the standards. And for example, if you look at the very last part, the last page on there, on the presentation, if, once you've averaged them out, if they received a 3.75 to 4.0, that would be the A+, plus, a 3.26 to a 3.74 would be an A, and so on. So that's how we would be able to convert to a letter grade or percentage. But that's just kind of a brief overview of kind of where we're at at this point. Does anybody have any questions? I went through that pretty quickly. I know one of my concerns that I have is, again, with our large turnover this year, 
and trying to implement this again. That's been a kind of a concern I have. I think that we can still make it happen. I don't think that we stop moving forward, but it's gonna take some work to get those new staff members you know, familiar with this and on board with this, but I think it'll be something that we will be able to do. It's just gonna take some work to get them ready for that. So, but that would be my concern that I have at this point. So, what's, what's the reason for it? What's that? What's the reason for it? The reason for the change? Yeah. I just, it makes kids, it shows you what the kids know. Like it's more specific instead of, like for example, if you look at the report card on, I think it's the third slide, this one right here. So looking at this, like for example, if you look at um, the science grade, so the science grade on that report card is an 89%, but it doesn't really tell you what went into giving that 89%. It just, it's just a common grade. You don't know if there's been behavior put into that. You don't know if that's been based on um, extra credit. It should, and you don't know how they did on certain standards. This will tell us directly how they're doing on standards, like very specifically what they'll know. So it's just kind of a more in depth, and you'll actually know, like with Zoe, you'll know what Zoe knows, like um, certain standards in math, like how she <coughs> would specifically be doing in those specific standards. So, so there will be, I mean, obviously, multiple standards throughout mm -hmm. math. Will you just be pulling like the ones that you think are the most important, or so all of them? One of the things, things that they they have worked on, if you look at the phases again, the implementation plan, phase one. We've really looked at the priority standards, the essential standards, and that's really what we focused on this year, like figuring out what those are, and those will be kind of the main standards we really focus on as we begin. And it's always gonna be a revision. We're always gonna be looking at ways to improve, and you know, after the first year, we might look, go back and look and see, okay, this wasn't something we need to cover as much and look at another one. So it's just kind of a, it'll always be something that we revise and try to monitor as we're going through it, so. Were we continuing to use my education? Uh, or were we Unfortunately, there's going to be at least a gap year um, because they converted with the other Skyward system and not the one we're on, and they can't get it done in the amount of time to be able to have it right next year. And so um, we had that conversation. Like so this ago. wouldn't be. No, it'll be in Skyward, and so Skyward has a standards-based grading rubric um, okay. and set up in there, and so everything. Like that's right now, um, I've got an email out to Ben Proctor, second in charge of KSDE. He promised me in about two weeks that we would have all of the standards in math, science, and ELA converted over into CSV files from the state, and then we will give those over to Skyward and Skyward will actually implement all of those into our Skyward, or into, yeah, into our Skyward system. So we're going to be using Skyward. Yeah. Check grades. Yeah. We're going to look at kids' grades and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For at least a year. Or for a year. Yeah. Before. And so. So what do we do with my education? Uh, it, it unfortunately is like a gap right now. Um, we're, we're working on if they can have it in the second year or not. And so um, it's just, it's up in the air right now. Um, Skyward does a lot of the things that my education data does um, in the Skyward system that Go Ahead just started did not do. And so um, Skyward has a lot of those things. It has attendance tracking pieces. Um, Skyward has a pretty robust NTSS system that um, for interventions and things that the buildings can use and track and everyone can see and move people and stuff like that. Um, there'll be family access um, portal for on Skyward. So, yeah, um, it sucks that that happened. But the my education data people felt terrible about it. But there's just no way I've begged and pleaded and pushed. And there's just no way. So, would we be looking at just going to more? Say that again. Would we be looking at just going to more? How much longer are we in contract with my education? It's done. It's it was a year to year contract with my education data, so um, so yeah. You technically could see how next year goes with Skyward, and if you don't want to go back to my education data, and could you like the family access portal and Skyward and all of those things and the way that all looks and stuff, then you could. I mean, we've always had to go edge a star is is our SIS system, 
but it just isn't friendly. It's not user friendly. It's not parent friendly. So that was my education data. My education data does some other things but on top of that, but just looking at the grade book, so Skyward will, um, will do that on the grade book side. So, so. I just have another question. <laughs> uh, so, for like when they give their test, then is there going to be some way for them to enter it that will calculate like this question was the standard, or will the teachers have to just do that themselves? So it, it'll be set up to where, yeah, it's going to be based off of like so if, like there might be a section of the test that's based off of a certain standard. Yeah, yeah, so it'll be. Okay. It'll easily be so done. So it's something that's easy for them to pull mm -hmm. and not have to. Yeah. yeah. The math okay. test might the math test and it might be over five standards. Yeah. And so then the teacher will go in and give a wherever they might get a three on one standard and a two on another one and a four on another one. And the cool thing about the reassessing part then is that kid doesn't have to reassess on every standard. So if they get there's five standards assessed on, the kid gets fours and threes on three of them and then gets twos on the other two those two they can reassess on any of them but they have to reassess on those two standards so when they go back and reassess mm -hmm. and work with the teacher they're going to be focusing on only the standards that right. they want to reassess on not the entire test and they just like they're just required to do it at least one time or do they have to keep doing it if they still get two they will keep doing it until they they'll have up to three times to do it but they'll have to, if they get a two the second time, hopefully with them going through and doing the work and working with the teacher, yeah. they can get it up to at least a three, but they'll keep doing it until. Okay. I mean, I would hope so. I just know like with some of our sped <clears throat> kids, like <clears throat> some of that might shut them down if they keep yeah. having to do this. Yeah. Thing. yeah, and you hope with modifications and the different things like that, that you're gonna be able to see that growth and that connection and stuff, so. So what happens when you get a three and you want a four? So you reassess and then you get two. <laughs> yeah. You see, we see, you can go down. So, yeah. But yeah, like hopefully for those of you that have kids in the system, like, you know, your kids should be able to come home and like when you say like, hey, what did you learn in math today? Right, it's not going to be like chapter four. No, it's I don't know. Or whatever. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> you, they, they literally are going to be able. They should be able to talk to like say, hey, we quadratic equations and blah 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 because that's the standard. Like they're going to be seeing that. They're going to be using that language and stuff. You you laugh, but it'll happen. Well, like you'll kind of do that. it in the grade school already, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. that yeah. when I go to the boys' parent teacher conferences, it's all based on like. They're putting these sentences together, and you ladies can correct me if I'm wrong, but like sounds and math equations and where they're at, whether they're working on fractions or mm -hmm. whatever. So for the elementary kids, as they move up, I can see for them it's not going to be a big adjustment as it is for our older kids right now. I think the behavior part is great. So mm -hmm. on these average standard scores, though, will that be like their GPA, so to speak? So like if they're applying for scholarships and stuff and it's a GPA required scholarship, um, what like what kind of information can our seniors? You have to convert to that. Yeah, so we, have have we would use that chart to convert it. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah we would still have GPAs well, yeah, that's and all I'm that making kind of sure stuff. Is yeah. that, that last one, like the 3.75 to 4, is, that would technically be their new GPA, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that'd be the same getting yeah. yeah, yeah. So then the average, the GPA would still average the same out, way. It'd be the same as we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you're going to see the grades on the standards, and then you're going to see the average to say, like, okay, you know, Braden has a B based on all of these standards and where he scored on all these standards, and mm -hmm. the average is a B, and then the GPA still averages out with that. So, okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's. I don't I haven't followed as close. I know Massachusetts had went away from um, like GPA transcripts, mm -hmm. so they went to a standards-based transcript in the state of Massachusetts. So like all their colleges in Massachusetts and everything mm -hmm. accepted those. That's very rare still, so that's why you have to have the conversion yeah. factor. So, um, but and. You know, Mr. Parker and the staff, they're not inventing the wheel. They have seven miles away. They have someone that's been there in year, what, two, three? They're officially in year three, I think. And yeah. they've been working on it for a very long time. So yeah. we can 
to always to, ask questions and ask questions on questions and lean on and, and visit with and stuff as well. So. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. I apologize. I gotta give you guys a little dandum here on the security quote. Let's maybe get that in the packet. This was an addition for the ag building. So the security quote would be pretty similar to what we wrote the grant for last year to upgrade the interior cameras, add exterior cameras, and then add access control on each of the doors. So our current system, it does have interior cameras. We don't have too many exterior cameras. Uh, the interior cameras are a little bit outdated. There's also a lot of analog ones that are running right there in the wall that's gonna get demoed when they go to the south wall. So that's gonna be another issue over there. And then our access control system is on its own separate system. And so we can't tie that in with the cameras. We don't have any visibility of when the doors are open. We don't get notifications. The admins can't unlock their doors or lock them or anything. The only way to do it from offsite is I buy remote into my computer and do it. So it's just kind of a clunky system that's all over. And this would put everything under one umbrella. So everybody would have the potential to view the cameras, unlock the doors. It's also got like a lot of analytics to do people searches, vehicle searches, and that kind of thing. It's also gonna address the mag locks. Whenever Winters did our system last time, put some mag locks on that are not compliant with the fire code. Heaven forbid we had a fire, they don't release from the inside with the push. So we would get those changed out with new push bars and we'd have video intercoms on the doors, which would also address the new <coughs> fuel area that they're doing with the construction. They're gonna cut a door in that wall so that the girls have visibility of visitors in the office. So then they can put a video intercom there as well. <clears throat> then people could come into that vestibule area. They'll be secured there, but they're still going to be isolated until they get buzzed into the school and they can't just walk in. Just a little extra additions for security. On the quote, it was listed out as broken down interior cameras, exterior cameras, access control, and then what I gave you was the access control and the cameras for the ag building. The total is hundred and fifty two thousand one hundred and thirty eight dollars so it's still a little pricey but it's about half of the price of the one we wrote the grant for and didn't get so it's a considerable drop in the price of that it still retains all the same functionality all the same features high quality cameras and this is working with INA Alert. They've been super helpful. They've came out multiple times. They're willing to work on a payment plan with us. We want to play a portion of the cost over like three years. That way we can kind of chunk it out so we don't have to come up with all the money at one time. So they've been really helpful there. This is Jake from INA, and he's going to show you just kind of some functionalities of the system, what it does, how it works, just to get a better idea of what they're talking about. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, like you said, I'm Jake Strecker. I'm with one of the co-owners of INA Alert. Um, we've taken a family business from three of us in the back of the garage to about 55 employees. And uh, we've had the uh, fortunate success to be able to install and do work in all 105 counties in Kansas. We work with 91 different school districts in various uh, forms across the state. Uh, this, is a, this is called AWARE. It's, an, it's a project product from Motorola uh, that recently bought this as a cloud-based system. And I know um, cloud's kind of a, a scary word, but the way that this is designed and set up, and we worked with Matt, Matthew, all the way through this, and a lot of this has his fingerprints on it, how he wants to use the system, how he wants to set it up. We never go into a situation where we say, you have to do it this way. Uh, we take a lot of input from the district and how you want it to be operational. This is, like I said, it's a cloud-based system, but the cameras themselves will retain footage for a period of 30 days. And what that does is allow you, to, and it's on the physical camera. So in the event that the internet is dropped, because I know that's one of the big scary things, if the internet's dropped, do the cameras still record? Short answer is, records the camera, 
uh, data connection is reestablished to the network and the cameras will automatically populate that data that's been stored on the camera to the cloud so you have, a, it's, we call it redundant storage. So, um, and so all these features, all these functions that I'm gonna buzz through are, are gonna be uh, forefront in your system. It allows for people counting. It allows you to, to search based on a, a figure or an identity, uh, both person and vehicle. It allows you to put heat maps and sensors so you know where your high traffic areas are. If you have a lot of vehicles dropping off for kids and stuff, you will be able to track that data and, and see those, uh, those heat elements. Uh, this is actually our shop right now in Ellenwood. Uh, you can see inside, I, I pulled this up uh, mainly because we have this camera here. This is our training room where all of our guys go through their training, uh, all of our technicians, but uh, they have <coughs> access to the front door, which is uh, just through those double doors to the right. Uh, they have this access because right here is their unlock button. Anybody that, and it's all credential based. So however we set up the user, uh, if we give them permission to unlock doors, they'll have a little magic key button at the top. They want to let somebody in, they hit the key, and they will be able to select whatever doors they have access to. So maybe one door, maybe 10 doors. But whatever door they want to unlock, I hit that, this is going to unlock my front door. I'm not going to do it because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> They don't, they let me play with the toys, but I don't get to like really play with the toys. Um, so from there, uh, that's an inside camera at night, obviously. And if I want to go, uh, we'll go to the, if I, I want to change views of cameras and, and, and things that I have, this will automatically, and this is a view that my, one of our guys set up for me for this event. Um, I can change layouts and inside the layout I can go to my cameras and I can drop in any camera that I want from our system. All my cameras are populated and listed over here. And if you have questions as I'm going, just tell me to stop talking. Um, my wife says I'm really good at talking. So it's gonna populate this outside. And you're gonna see these colors down here. Well, I zoomed in for me. Uh, use the mouse, it's way easier. So you're going to see you're going to see colors at the bottom. If you can see those, there's some purple down here and there's some blue or some green. Uh, those are your people's people and vehicle moving through the scene, right? So if I go and I want to look at this data, which is playback mode, which that there I'm already in playback mode, and I'm dragging my little menu guy over to, and I can zoom in here. I can export right there. It's really easy. It just takes a second since I'm going through the cloud. It's going to start populating. It's going to start showing me vehicles. It's going to start showing me different things inside the system. If I want to do a lot of stuff really fast, this is searching for people that have walked in front of the shop over a given period of time. So if I see a backpack in a hallway, some kid comes to me and says, the backpack's gone. I left it right in my locker. I went to class, came back, it was gone. Just go to the camera, go back to the time period before class and after class, and you search for a spot and you look for somebody with that backpack. And so I can click this. Takes me to him. <coughs> I'm actually pulls the video and starts my clip from when he's walking in front of the camera. Same situation if I want to go to vehicles. This is going to pull all the vehicles over a period of time that we're in the shop. This is this truck going into this garage here. It's popular. The truck's moving. The stationary one is pink, but it's creating data. When it's live, it's creating data, based, and you know that based on the blue te text box around the vehicle. Any questions? So, and all of this is going to be, and we'll provide training, lots and lots and lots of training. And anytime Matthew needs anything uh, from us, uh, or a phone call and a, and a car ride away. So um, our office is based out of Illinois, Kansas, over by Great Bend. It's about, you know, you know how fast the traffic is, uh, it's about two hours away. That is, I wanted to search. 
Here's my search. It's going to search for that vehicle or any red vehicle. And I can start diving into this as it goes more and more. If I hover over a clip, it plays me a quick little snippet. There's my truck. Here's my truck. Here's my truck. And it starts to identify and it'll whittle down based on how many times I start diving into the search. Another nice thing, it is tab-based, so inside the system, I'm continuing to look. This is a feature that a lot of the receptionists use and a lot of uh, facilities use. So these are the cameras on our facility. This is a Google Earth image, so there's, you see cars there, they're not going to move. It's not, we don't have live footage of the aerial view. But all the purple ones are moving vehicles. And within, the, within a certain amount of time, the green are our cameras. The, green, the hue around the camera is the field of view that is looking for things, and that can be adjusted. But every, every one of the little purple dots right now is a person. If there's a blue or is a uh, car, if there's a blue dot, it's a person. A blue key is a door. I can hit that and unlock it. And there is a fire. There, I, uh, fire alarms are also on here, and our halo detectors uh, are on here as well. Our halo is identified with the fire alarm. But I know you have halo detectors that can be integrated into the system the same way and be populated and used the same way. Provide you with additional data. <clears throat> Any questions? It's, and everything that you see is on the, the project already. So this is our heat map for the last hour uh, for cameras going into in and around our shop. Uh, and populate. So obviously this is Highway 56. The, the highest concentration there is going to be orange, and those are vehicles driving to in front of that camera. So I'm going to go back to the camera view. I'm um, right here. I can shrink this down. Come back over to my cameras. This is a fun thermal camera. It's in front of our shop. You can mess with that, and then this is. This is a PTZ, so that's the control. This, I can move this camera around. Uh, this is eastbound 50, Highway 56. Uh, no popular in just a second. It's connecting via a, a uh, wireless antenna that's on our street sign or on our, our facility sign, then back to our shop. And then, so it's, it's bridged to our Wi Fi network, so it takes a, little sec a few seconds to populate. And at the same time I'm doing this presentation, uh, my brother-in-law Jordan is actually in Quinter right now doing the same presentation. So we're both on the system at the same time. Any number of people can log in at the same time. There's no, uh, no, no one's gonna kick, getting kicked off. There's, there's no limit or no number, or at least you guys aren't gonna hit it uh, in your district to the number of people that can access the system altogether. Is, this, do you, is there an app or is there something or how do you? Yes, yeah, so you have access on your laptop and through a browser and you can have it there as an app also for cell phones, both for the cameras and then also a door component. Okay. But everything can be accessed through the, the this Aware, which is the camera app. Do we have any questions or anything? Comments, concerns? Do we have the cameras record sound too? Or yes, the okay. cameras that we put up for you guys also have sound. These do not, uh, but it does populate the same way. Is this your info layers? So these are all the different fun things you can do with each camera, provided the camera has it. And here would be your uh, your audio will be here, and you can kind of do different things. And this is your um, cloud storage that you have, and how much is being stored, uh, access control, all kinds of different fun things. These are your vehicle. So next time that you come through. There's your bonding box showing me that it's a vehicle. Do you guys work with feed mills? With what? Feed mills. Feed mills? Yeah. Yeah, we, we do a lot of uh, all this stuff for Gavilon. We do all this stuff for Ursic and Dole, uh, their feed yards. We do all this stuff, a lot of different dairies. Um, that's actually where we started. Actually, we started in sale barns. And then that took us to feedlots, and then from feedlots it went to uh, grain elevators, and grain elevators 
Actually, it was a co-op member that took us into our first school, and schools went to hospitals, hospitals went to nursing homes, nursing homes went to municipalities and local government. So we do all the work for uh, Finney County. We do all their county buildings over at Garden City. Anything else? Yeah, it was great. The same people that are in the community on the board of the school and, and the, the nursing home around working with females and but yeah. So this this is an app that's like this is a web page right now. I'm going to browse it. But you can see this on absolutely. App. So our dispatch. We're going to get that the they would have access. So, yeah. you, so what you do in that situation, you create user accounts for them, and their accounts become act active in the event that there's an event. That way they're not on it whenever they feel like it. Right, but those user accounts could be set up yes. previously, and yes. then just activate Yeah, and we'll help you guys set all right that now. stuff up. We would just, we just need user, we need names, and then uh, we'll establish a, like a first initial last name as a user account, and then uh, we we auto populate some passwords and then any other uh, accessibility. I just get with Matthew and we would establish what level of accessibility they're at. We have guys for that. Yeah. Because they're only allowed to have access during an emergency situation, right? They, they can't have full time access. Correct. It's, uh, yeah. Or something. Right. Which that's fun. But that's always a concern. I mean, that's been an issue with both schools in this district. Is we ever have somebody walk through the school? And then, so and like, <clears throat> how does it trigger those accounts? Is there some kind of like we have to hit an emergency button? Yeah, there's. We establish an emergency button inside the system, and then in the event that there is an issue, um, whether it be based on a rule that you've created or based on just a, a, a physical button on the computer. A double click or something to put the system into that protocol, then the notifications then sent out. So then we'd set up like an alarm trigger if somebody's yes. not close to the button and they can't push it, there will be some kind of fail safe yeah. to trigger that in case yeah. there. Exactly. We do have, I mean, you can get very technical. You can get it set to where the superintendent's badge, if he triple taps a, a sensor, it automatically puts the system into a lockdown uh, protocol. Um, there's a, there's some different cool stuff you can do. Those are things we those are on the backside. We talk with you guys and how you best want it to work. And the cameras on the door accesses are those just for visual? Do they do any type of recording? Or is it just simple? No, they no no no. They're part of the system. Okay, so they yeah, they're all tied together. So they record and then they have two way audio. Oh, okay. So if you don't want to let them in, you can tell them why not. Not be in charge of those. <laughs> <laughs> and does a two-way communication go through the app too? Like if someone buzzes in, can you talk through the app to them? Or yeah. Be from the main reader? Yeah, yeah. That's and some of the new feature sets they're going to come out with um, that you have access to in the future will be uh, weapons presence detection through uh, the analytics. So it identifies gate and it identifies like sixteen different algorithms that are tied into identifying when someone walks in whether or not they could potentially have a weapon on them. So it can tell the difference between a handgun and a banana, and um, kind of any any of those any of those things, an umbrella and a rifle or a shotgun. So it's cool stuff. It's kind of the next evolution of uh, web-based analytics. Anything else? Anybody here? Okay. Cool. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's when we go right into the. Sound system. Yeah, stuff. so you don't have to stick around all night. Because <laughs> it's way later on the agenda. So, are you guys looking at the KCAV quote first on that one? So you guys will need to go down to 8.3 on your agenda and then you can see the attachments. If you go down to 8.3, yep. the first one will be KCAV. Yep. So this, these are quotes are for uh, upgrading the gym system. Currently, it's an analog sound system. Just they, they work, you know. There's just it just it plays music. So these are for digital sound systems. It's going to have better music quality. It's also going to have some 
suppression feedback options to keep the system from blowing out if it gets too loud. I guess that's what happened last time. Someone kind of yelled into the mic, gain was up too loud, and it kind of blew it. So that distortion is real bad for the speaker. So the digital systems are supposed to prevent that. It should also provide more functionality as far as not having to crawl up to the crow's nest. We would just thought maybe we hire somebody who's physically incapable of climbing up there. We don't know who's going to handle the music. So this these systems would allow for you to connect it to an iPad or to a touch panel device and control the system that way. So we can always, if this is not an option, we can always go back to an analog system. But we just thought moving forward to kind of future proof it, this is probably something that could help carry us you know, 20, 15, 20 years down the road. Uh, so this is a QSYS system. KCAV and HOPS provided us with the same system, so I'll talk about it, and then I have some little examples of what it looks like. Essentially, it runs on like a computer network, but the computer network just ties the speakers and the amps and the audio system together. And then it's controlled from a touchscreen device. So they quoted us one touchscreen controller. That's the first line there, that seven inch PoE touchscreen. It says in wall mounting. They originally said they were gonna mount it up in the crow's nest, which pretty much doesn't give us the added functionality we were looking for. So we were requesting two of those, but this was the quote that they sent. But other than that, it has the ability to do Bluetooth connection. It has the feedback and the suppression safety built in. Uh, these systems are supposed to last upwards of 15 years. When I talked to people about how long they last, they said they've got them going 15 years and haven't replaced any. The downfall is it is a computer. So, I mean, if the computer <coughs> locked up, the computer is locked up and the system is kind of tied up. It's supposed to be pretty quick to get it out of there. These guys are charging us for service. It's, uh, I think it was $2,000 for edge level service, one year agreement. They also charged us $20,000 for installation services and design services. I wasn't really thrilled about that. The equipment's only 24,000, but the total quote was 47,000. They are on a state contract, but it's still, it's still more expensive than Hops. Hops is the next one, and they quoted us. Somebody had a question about them. I was gonna say they had a ninety-day warranty. Yeah, I was. I was not thrilled. They also didn't. The only person that came out was the salesman. He took a lot of pictures, and then when I asked him questions about the system, he's like, "Oh, I don't know. I got to get with the engineer." And then we had to set up a call with the engineer for the <coughs> questions. So I wasn't. I wasn't super confident there. These guys, it's two guys. One guy is Hobbs and then the younger kid that he works with that does most of the digital stuff. So the older guy handles analog, the younger guy handles digital. They drove out here from McPherson. They spent several hours out here explaining the system, getting all the information. It's the same system, but the processor is actually more robust. If you go through it line by line, you'll notice the price of the parts on this one is a little bit more expensive, but they're not charging us for any design or labor. Or they're charging us for labor, but the cost of labor was less. <coughs> no extra design. They're also giving us a second touchscreen controller, so they would mount one in the crow's nest to control the main unit. We'd also have one down on the wall on the gym floor. So whoever's down there, so you got someone running audio, can run over there, connect their phone, or just kind of start or stop the music from that little panel there, which should be pretty nice. Still has all the, sur the surge protector, power conditioner, the feedback suppression that's got all that stuff built in. Uh, Bluetooth accessibility, still gonna run on that network and they'll come in and put that network in and that'll be just for the audio equipment. And these guys, they'll be the ones doing it. They said they're a phone call away if we need service. They expect it to be done in about three days. They'll come out and they can set it up. It's fully customizable. So they said it can be as complex or as difficult as we want it to be. These are a couple pictures of some examples of what it should look like. It can look however you want, but I told them we really want this to be completely foolproof. I'd like for anybody to be able to walk up and use it and have a pretty good idea of how to use it. Did they not get like, one when they were here? 
Do what? <laughs> no, I kept away from one. <laughs> Don't want to break it. <laughs> Tell him this is the guy that has done it. We need something similar. Is <laughs> he like a robot wand that sit up there and run the audio for all the game? That kind of rolls me into, I guess, the next one uh, from Eric Miller. He also came out, really smart guy. We spent about two hours looking and talking. He really knows his stuff. Uh, the advantage of his was he's put he's upgraded all the systems for Hugoton, and apparently it's made a massive <coughs> difference in the amount of attendance they have for games. They said they used to not hardly get anybody for basketball games, and now they're at standing room only. They've won state the last couple of years in a row. And that might have something to do with it. Yeah, I don't know. He said, the coach says we won state because the music system's so good. I don't know. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. But he says it's really, it's really increased engagement out there. This is going to be a really robust system. It's really going to sound good. Everything's JBL. Everything's top-of-the-line audio equipment. He knows a lot about audio. Uh, my only is actually a little cheaper is the cheapest one too. My only concern with this was it sounded a little bit more complicated to use. It can still be controlled from an iPad, so it'll be a digital mixer. So the iPad is going to look just like a mixer. You're going to have your channels, your tracks, your buzzes. So if you understand audio, it's fine. You'll have a blast with it. If you never not too familiar with audio equipment, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. He will train us, but he kept emphasizing the amount of hands on the system is crucial and to limit the amount of engagement on the system. The way they do theirs, he mans the system. They have like a crew of like five people. So they wear headsets, he mans the audio system. They've got their announcer, they've got their band director, they've got, I don't know, somebody else. And they all kind of talk in between and he, adjust the audio up or down depending on whether the band's playing he kind of adjusts the speakers for the announcer so it gives it a real like professional collegiate feel but it also takes takes a village to run it so i don't it sounded like it might be a little too complex for what we're looking for but as far as quality wise i think it would be good I was kind of leaning toward Hawks just for, I thought it seemed like the best quality of installation and the best ease of use, but that's just my personal preference. And depending on how we decide we're gonna run the sound. But if it's just one person, if we go to that system, probably one person needs to be kind of married to it, one or two people so that they aren't messing it up too bad. His system also had higher quality microphones, so the, the speech, and anytime we do speeches in there, anytime someone's using a microphone, you can get sound off of that. It's got all JBL, it's got a subwoofer, and then some smaller speakers to carry the higher gain, so you're gonna get your lows and your highs, it should even out pretty well. You'll use an analyzer to get the sound quality of the gym. So as far as sound quality goes, that would probably be the best, but as far as ease of use goes, uh, it might also be the most difficult to use. So it turned off an iPad with this? The yeah. The mixer would be up? The, there is a physical mixer up there, but then you connect the iPad, and the iPad right. basically looks exactly like the mixer. So you're doing everything. You don't have to be up there, but you still do. Well, I do art in <laughs> church. Oh, do you? I can, <laughs> I can do that. So it's not. Well, I was just saying. Yeah, I don't think it's surely really difficult if you got somebody willing to do you it. Surely music set, your microphone set, and then it's just, that's all we're using. The only well, thing he said microphone. with this was to make sure that every track you play is digital. He said if right. you play an older track that somebody tries to move over, you get some distortion in the system, and then it causes issues. He will, there is, once again, su like suppression built in to limit that distortion, but he did say it's still possible to damage the speakers. I guess it happened up there. Yeah, we've adjusted our gate. Uh, so somebody like Gills or 
<clears throat> the mic, it kills it. Uh, once nice. it hits a certain input, he did say there was some features that can be built in. I thought he said that's one of the features. I thought he said they can limit the change, how the max gain of each channel, so you can't move it up anymore. So I think we could put some fail safes in there until we get used to using it. I just I wouldn't be scared of a digital board. I mean I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I figured it out. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, like, well, these would be labeled, so, like, yeah. you would know which track is which, and then up is louder, down is softer, mute is no audio, solo is run by itself. So it's, yeah, it could easily be learned as long as we what's, got someone willing to What's freaky is that board it. sitting there that actually has a mountain on it, <laughs> and you adjust it on your iPad and watch the, like, move up and down. Like yeah. Anybody else have questions, comments, concerns? So Hops is who you would like? I liked Hops. Uh, I liked Eric too, but I, did, I wasn't sure, you know, if we were going to have somebody that would feel comfortable running that, if that person's always going to be there. I feel like you could get set. I understand what he's doing there. Yeah, we're, we're not using we're a lot of those functions. We're using the microphone and playing music. But I don't know. I know it can get messed with, but surely you can find the spot it's supposed well, to be in and put it in that spot. I don't know. Which artist is a bearing here? This is a Yamaha. I'm sure this is a better board, I'm sure. It's a Yamaha. Yeah. Yamaha a TF, I think. Or as we have saved on, which I can't do it. Like I would have to get somebody to do it, but our sound guy that helps set it all up. We got everything set. All the equalizers and everything set, and then he saved it on flash drive. <coughs> and it in the drawer, so he did say that could be done. Somebody if, like even if all multiple all people want to use it, different people could have a flash drive and they could put that in there, and that'll pull up their preload settings. So probably like if we decide how we wanted it to be set, then when he's here, we say, hey, I want you to configure it exactly like this, put the limits in, label it, and then we've got like microphone, music. Maybe that's all we need, it's just two channels. In ours, you can color code here. You can change the colors on it. So make it real dummy pretty. Red electrical tape around all the mics. That's the red one. Sample <laughs> <laughs> around the mic. That's my other one. Do what? Were there multiple mics in this? Yeah, I think there was two of those Sennheisers. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift mics. Those two shirts. There's one handheld and one lapel mic, it looks like. We could add more, take away, whatever. We can make changes to it as long as we do it before he starts. Once he starts, then he ch charges for the changes. <coughs> Anything else? So you wouldn't be heartbroken with either one? No, I wouldn't be heartbroken. I like music. I love digital music. So, I mean, he was showing me that. It's like, don't show me that. <laughs> I want to go in there and play with it, but I don't know that I'll so be here for nights. <laughs> so I don't know. So he's volunteering to be at every game? <laughs> well, yeah, if I was going to be at every game, I'd say, yeah, no brainer, go with that one, but I can't be at every game. That scares me. Not on the wall. The wall? Yeah. You see a lot of that in new gym builds? Now. As I say, you probably. Like, yeah. you see them. them Build them with them mounted in the walls like that and stuff. So yeah, you just turn them off. I mean, they're just down, so people can't mess with them, and they don't break when balls bounce off of them and stuff like that. And everything. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a few kids that challenge too. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you. Yeah. Hey, can we? We should have thought about this. Like, they're here for the. Just if you guys have any questions about the 
I assume. Calendar. So here's my ask is maybe do that and then if we could go tour before it gets dark, like I'd yeah. like you guys to be able to go out and see the storm shelter and stuff in the okay. light before it gets dark and then come back and finish the rest of this. Yes. Calendar. Seven yeah, two. You want to say about the calendar? We just came in case you had any questions that we could answer. We added, we added the two days on this today. It's a Friday before Christmas break and a Friday before spring break um, on calendar B. Because it had already had three days built in, so we added the other two. And our thinking behind that was, I know in the elementary, when you have a Friday in the middle that you're trying to do for education, it breaks the routines. And then our younger kids, those routines and procedures this just consistency is so important. So our thinking behind that was putting the Friday before Christmas, um, we could lump all all of the Christmas activities that would be done would be done on that Friday. And then that way, if a kid decides not to come to school, well, you're gonna miss that fun day, but the other four days would still be either testing or you know curriculum work. Um, kind of the same with spring break. Um, the one before that, we have the career fair, which kind of just makes the whole day crazy and then um, not necessarily the whole day, but it disrupts the morning and it's just be a different activity that still wouldn't disrupt the four days of consistency. Okay. Okay. And then you added two days of Thanksgiving, or was that already We already there? had that. That was already there. Okay. Questions? So we have how many snow days go through? You have. I, you have to be careful saying you have five days built in over the minimum. That's how I would say it. Okay. Yeah. You have five days built in over the minimum by the state. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Hazard days or yeah. hell days or snow days yeah. or <laughs> snow <laughs> days. <laughs> Windy days. Windy days. <laughs> okay. All right, so we just need to approve it. We need to do that now. If you want, or you can wait and come back to it if you have any more questions for them. 7.2. Yeah. You can all of I'm sorry, we don't have to do it now. Does anybody have any questions about it? We can just do it. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll go to now. Yeah, let's go to
Reports. Rack. Okay. So um, we have yet to find a poll manager. So that is still open. We had an applicant. They ended up going with something else. So that's open. I think um, there was um, conversation. I think we need to probably find some rep board training, kind of similar to like what we do for school board to kind of get rules and stuff down as far as like text messaging and those kind of things going on. Um, coma? What? Like yeah, coma, coma and, and some things. Um, I know that I was at the last meeting, but I know that was a conversation. So I kind of started Googling that myself, kind of found too much. Um, but I also didn't try very hard. <coughs> um, so I know we've gone through Easter. Um, got that stuff done. Soccer starting. Um, I don't know how well that's going for sure. Um, we don't have very many games. Like we might get three soccer games in the next, games in the next two weeks. So um, thought that was a little bit different. So yeah, and then. So, <coughs> soccer, like today, we got a call, and like, I just want to get it out there. So, <laughs> with us not getting a coach, so last year we were trying to figure out when to oversee. The football field's in bad shape. Uh -huh. And so, and it's, we need to oversee the football field to get it back in better condition. And so, with not finding a middle school soccer coach and not having to fight with that, Jeremy and I were like, well, let's take advantage of not having middle school soccer in the spring right now and let's get it overseeded and get that done and stuff and everything and then we got a call and so I know it's not the ideal situation but we're gonna have to keep people off of the mm -hmm. main football field and keep them over there and stuff and so trying to set up both fields and everything and so okay. not trying to be difficult or anything no, just we're just trying to take advantage of sure. a, a situation yeah. so but that's mm -hmm. Field yeah, we, so, we've got a lot of bare spots out there that. and stuff, so we need to. We're getting ready to. We can't turf it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <we're gonna laughs> <start>. Natural grass. <laughs> so Jeremy's getting ready to start that. We'll put a message out to the community, and we're, he's going to tape it off too to keep people off of it. But we'll put a message out after we get it over reseeded and stuff to please stay off the football main football field. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Put him on post. Yep. We can just do a sign up sheet of the uh, KJK. Yeah. Oh, we'll find about it. Okay. I punch. Mm -hmm. 30 minute meeting. Uh, they went over some of their open positions they still have for next year, staff development. Talked about the interlock agreement again. <coughs> Forget what they initially, what they've gone on so long that we never vote on anything, so I don't even. Yeah, so KSD's lawyers are telling them that they can't do, you can't change the interlocal agreement, you can't. We're pushing back and saying that we don't think KSDE's like the one person they're talking to is not the all knowing on everything. And so it's kind of interesting. So essentially, what Amanda's then, what needs to happen is Elkhart needs to have a higher assessment. Then. So if Elkhart wants to have this relationship with this virtual school and High Plains has to do things, and all the school districts in High Plains are on the hook for this virtual school and if they're not following things and getting identified because of them not doing what they're supposed to do with IEPs and stuff and then we have to the service center, the interlocal has to take money and put it towards things because we get identified because of this Elkhart needs to be assessed at a higher like, for, for this virtual school and so that'll put Elkhart at probably the highest assessed school in the in the Interlocal of the 17 schools and stuff and everything, but if if 
if we're not going to push it back on KSDE and that we can actually change the interlocal agreement, then the next step is we can't just keep it a status quo. Like we can't be on the hook for something we have no control over um, and stuff. So there's a superintendent meeting. I won't be there. She just changed it again to the 15th or something to kind of talk about this issue. And then they basically just talked about funding from the state, all those stuff going on. And they already have new teachers starting on July 30th. Mm -hmm. timeline on so the bus was taken to Derby not to Kansas City mm -hmm. yeah that's cheap to build at least mm -hmm. sure. yeah cheaper in Kansas City yeah but it's massive uh, yeah we don't have a timeline on Well, we, got, we have, I mean, I think we'll probably hear in the next few weeks maybe on if they're going to fix it. If they're going to fix it, that's where the timeline becomes an issue uh, on how long that's going to take. Um, so, yep. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going to bring some up. I'm not complaining about it or anything, but I'm just letting you know the pile of rocks down at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. has become a kid's playground. Mm -hmm. So as nice that though. continues to be there, there's going to be more and more rocks spread out everywhere. Okay. They were getting thrown up against the building the other day okay. so practice yeah. and I was just letting you guys know yeah. so that you might want to. Which one? That the big pile. The hill between the track oh, right. and the, oh, the, the session stand. The session yeah. stand. Yeah. It's just kids are just playing on it chucking rocks everywhere and so they're going to end up getting rocks all yeah. over. And with soccer and starting it's going to be you know, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where it was. Well, with the weather, this, people are out walking huh? like crazy. Mm -hmm. so they're, I they're can't home. remember. He was going to put it somewhere, try to put it somewhere. Maybe under some of the fence, actually, around the over around, like on the east side. Yeah. I was just like, no, we might do some with it before yeah. there's rocks where you don't want rocks to be. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. before there's no more rock pile. Yeah. 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 What does he want to do with the track? This is this something with the board's permission? He wants to put temporary patches down on the track? Yeah, it would essentially, I think, try to just patch some holes um, to try to keep kids from tripping and falling in them. Um, it would be kind of a, his own job buying some material and just putting it down in the areas where the track is that something completely that came away. It is no longer there, so there's areas where there's no more track. I wonder if that's something that's like the track filling machine that we use on the streets for. I don't know how heavy they are. You can get one down the extra track. Yeah. That's the worst that could happen. Put more tracks on. Yeah. <laughs> Make it worse. <laughs> Don't think so. Yeah. So, I mean, I can let him, he can get some of that stuff. I don't think it's like, it costs a lot. It's a bucket of stuff from the way he explained it. And he goes in there and kind of goes over it. So, I think it'd be very similar to, you know, we had that one company out here that, it was 180000 or something, but they could guarantee it past two years, a couple of years ago, because the cracks would come back and stuff. You at least get this 100 yards, that's where, or the 100 meters, that's where 
they're mostly at. Yeah. Okay. That's and that's where they're mostly doing their running, practicing stuff so right there in that 100 meter stretch. Start there anyway. Because it's going to work. If you get on, I mean, it's safe to get on the streets. You would melt that rubber because you have to clean it up. But put rubber back in. Oh, I'll see what he says. So I'm sure they help us. Okay. Anything else? The house. Does it have the back patio on there? Thanks. Yeah. You didn't see that? Yeah. Like at the end. The first part of the right before two. grounds. He's getting a couple of other prices on that. That would be good today. Yeah. So. But that deck on the back of that house, it's like it's started, it's setting like it sets like this back into the house. So it's like pulled away from the roof and it's like settling back into the, down into the house like that. It's, so. Actually, he went over there to, he went over there to do something else and then he came back and was like, that deck on the back of the house here and it's not in very good. So, uh, yeah, I'm not fine with them. So he kind of. Well, so while we're here talking about houses and stuff, obviously, we need to, Mr. Bassett and stuff, we'll have to decide what we want to do with that house and those things and stuff. If we have staff that is interested in moving into that house, we can just put probably like a, just on a rough guesstimate, twenty to $30,000 price tag on it. Excellent. Yeah. I'm going to say, that's just, <laughs> I just said a rough guess. I'm going to say four dollars and fourteen cents. So, I paid for a gallon of gas yesterday. Donation. <laughs> so, Get you some more stuff on that. He said by May. So see if you want to do anything. It's just do we have? Do we know? Do we have anybody? Any potential staff or current staff? Morning. Do we have people signed up for housing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a potential? One of our, I know one of our potential hasn't officially signed yet. Person would be interested in housing too. So the person that's going to need to sign in the next day or so. <clears throat> So, yeah, and I think uh, we all, we all I mean, do we have numerous? We have two staff members and one non staff member. I'm one of the staff members. And one non staff member? Yeah. So, two staff, possibly three staff, three. and then one non staff member. We're all staff right now, right? Yeah. Well, Every day. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, we'll have two leaving. We have two in the townhomes that we know are not coming back. So we know that we have two townhomes coming yeah. open. Which, do we know what are they? Twos or threes? Twos. Both of them are twos. Yeah. They're both two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. We said the three. Kayla has a three. No, no, she's not. <laughs> Lisa did say that she would be willing to move if somebody needed a one and a three, she would be willing to move over to a two. So. 
Ja. Okay. Anything else? Excuse me. All right. Mrs. Ball. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I just shared some right now where we're at data with you. Um, the first part is from Rosen. It's our online library, and it shows um, how we've grown in Lexiles. A Lexile is a student's reading ability and as well as a text difficulty. And so um, I shared that with you for K2 is level up. Um, how many levels they've grown and how many minutes they've read, how many books they've read. And then the same thing with light sale, which is 3.5. The next part I shared data from um, my education data. And the first one is our attendance. Um, our chronic absenteeism is up a little bit. I've been working with uh, our SRO on home visits and sending home letters to families to let them know where they're at. Um, Truancy laws are included on that uh, letter, like a paragraph about what that is. Uh, we've been talking as a group about wraparound services. What do our families need? It is, it, it's uh, repetitive families or families that are repeating it. Um, so it's not like spread out across a lot of families. It's certain families So we've talked about and I've talked with Carlisle or Officer Carlisle as well about what do these families need? What wraparound services can we provide to help support? And here it's, it's kind of hard finding those things. So Are you getting decent support? I'm sorry? Are you getting decent support? Um, he's wonderful about when we have someone missing to go and check on them if we ask him to. And so we've had some, I've, I've been able to have some one-on-one -on -one conversations with parents when they're brought to school and uh, through him, so yes, he's he's been very helpful with that. As far as um, further down the process, no, we're not really there, and, and he says the same thing. So as far as what can happen lawfully with those families, um, it's not very helpful to them. So, if that makes any sense, what I'm trying to say. I'm like, not sure you get much push from our county attorney. So, I don't think you have to worry about going much further. I think the biggest thing that helps is just having conversations and one-on-one um, -on -one with the family and letting them know how important it is for their child to be at school and, you know, that maybe they're not aware of the laws here, they don't come from those kind of backgrounds, and so just talking to them. The next one is just showing a, a little snapshot of engagement for my education data. Um, not a lot of our parents are logging in. If you have any feedback on that for me, I'm open to suggestions on how to get parents more interested. I know right now there's not a lot of data other than attendance and KELPA scores and our uh, assessments, the way that it works, um, not connecting to our grade book and things. So. I don't expect him to log in real frequently, but we do have a newsletter that goes home every Monday morning at 6 a.m. And so that should be connecting parents to their um, attendance data and things with their students. So if you like it, don't like it, I'm, I'm open to, to hearing about that. I will say when I log in, I'm looking at my high school kid mm -hmm. and not necessarily my I will agree with that. I get Because I'm um, checking grades. To look at <laughs> grades and tardies and mainly tardies because I know when they finish. But yeah, I mean, I know the boys' and stuff is there. I know their fast bridge stuff is in there. Um, I think, you know, yeah, so I do see that every now and then, but. I look at it. Yeah. I just, I frequent the high school in the morning okay. just because of that connection. That's it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, I think, like you said, with it not tied to the grade book, yeah, yeah that does hinder it a lot. Because you're only getting a small snippet of data. Yeah, exactly. So, <coughs> thank you for that feedback. And um, the next one is just showing where we're at with the behavior. Lots of improvements have been made. I hope you guys are are seeing that as well. Um, we've had a lot of growth in our kiddos. Um, and then enrollment. 
We had another student enrolled today, so we're actually at 137. We had one enroll Thursday and another one today, so 137 is where we're currently at. And I just shared some pictures of classroom happenings as I did some walkthroughs. And our events that are coming up. The last thing I wanted to share is teachers have been working really hard on unpacking the standards. And so if you look at this document, this the standard is this part right here. So this is just one standard in, I think it was writing, yes, um, that they look at. So the state gives us the standard. This is what you need to teach this, the, the children. This is what they should be able to do at third grade. And then the teachers have gone through, this document is blank, and together they look at the verbs and the nouns and they talk about, okay, what vocabulary do the kids need to know to master this standard? What skills do they need to be able to do? And then they write the objectives and those skills in here. And so there's a lot to one standard that they have to teach and kids have to master. So just to give you a little example of what they've been working on during PLC. <coughs> Any questions about elementary? Yeah, I'm going to ask a stupid question. There's no stupid questions, oh, right? That's a lot. <laughs> I know as an educator, you, add, you say that. And then when I started teaching, I said that, I got proven wrong. Maybe I have a stupid answer. <laughs> what is it? SWBAT. The student will be able to. Just an abbreviation. Good question, though. You wouldn't know. Yep. Oh, I work oh, in a medical yeah, world. Yeah, you don't have any idea. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Only we like to abbreviate Latin for English words. <laughs> All right, so we had a busy month in the high school, middle school. One of the things I want to kind of focus on is our reality uni university that we had. We held that with Blake in high school. Um, basically what that is, is students imagine that they're, what their life would be as a 26 year old and they complete an online survey, a lifestyle survey. And then this information is then entered into the reality U software along with their current GPA. And then it creates a unique individualized future scenarios. Our kids really enjoyed this. This was a great opportunity for our students. Um, the students then had to look at their monthly income, uh, their credit card debt, student loan information, um, their marital status. Um, some of them had uh, babies that they carried around that were crying. And it was just a really good eye-opening experience for them. Um, and then when they, if they went over on their purchases, they had to actually return them because their accounts could not fall, fall below zero. So it was just a really good experience for them. And we look to host this every year. It was just like I said, a really fun experience. Um, Mrs. Weberg did a tremendous job getting the funds we needed for that and then getting everyone here. It was a big undertaking, but it was a really great day for our students and our staff. Um, state assessment updates. We will finish our state assessments um, this Tuesday and Wednesday. We just have our high school science left and then we'll be finished with our state assessments. I feel like they've gone really well this year. I'm really excited to see how our students have progressed and improved this year. Our parent-teacher conferences will be this coming Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you have a student in the high school, middle school, you should have received um, an invite from their Spartan Council teacher. Um, if you did not, contact the office and we'll give you a schedule what do you of mean time. By invite, like my daughter called me. That's, like, yeah, so that's what the, yeah, this is schedule of the time. Schedule both her and her brothers. Yeah, and that's what it was, so. Um, and they'll be going, that'll be a student-led conference this time as well. Um, driver's Ed update. Um, so today we opened it up to outside Deerfield students. Um, we had about 24 spots open that were available at the beginning. I think Deerfield students, I think we had seven or eight sign up at this point. Um, so we will open those up to Lakin students and any other students around the area. Um, they will do the drive, or they'll do the book work the last week in May, and then they'll do the driving portions over June, July, and then part of August. So <clears throat> kind of excited about that as well. Yeah, um, same teachers. Same two teachers. <clears throat> um, Joel is doing the driving part. 
and then Dean is doing the book work is how they decided to do oh, it this okay. year. So, um, and all the book work will be at one time. And then again, the driving will be spread throughout those three months. So, but we have 24 spots available. And then finally, I would like to enter, I like to, our senior signing, I'd like to invite you to our senior signing and our graduation. Our senior signing is May 10th at 6.30. That's where the students, the seniors will come and they will talk about what their future plans are. We kind of make a big deal out of that for them. So that's kind of a fun event for them. And then graduation is that Saturday, May 11th at 11 a.m. You guys will sit on stage with us. If you can come, let me know. If you can't make it, we understand. But just let us know so we can have the seats available for you. So any questions? It's mandatory. <laughs> yeah, we're sick. Yeah, we're sick. Is Kip still open? Huh? Is yeah. Kip still open? Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Kind of weird. We size. talked about moving the senior Our signings on that Friday before graduation. So that hopefully, I talked about it in this part of chat today. Like, hopefully, families if families have kids coming in, like they can maybe take off work, you know, and drive in and come to the senior signing thing to see that part of it at night. Um, you know, after this year, if you, you know, you do all the reading of scholarships and all of those different things and stuff like that at graduation, you possibly are going to get into some extremely longer graduations. Yeah. So a lot of schools that do like senior signing nights and things like that, they'll do the scholarship announce, they'll do the signings and stuff and they do the scholarship recognition at senior signing night. And then they have that entered into the program so people can read it at graduation but eliminates having a three-hour graduation so. well and the high school middle school parent planning committee has been kind of talking about that event because we'd like to help support it and make it a more of a formal event for our seniors and maybe a more formal event to recognize student activity participation so i will get with you this mm -hmm. next week yeah. this week today's monday on that, with the ideas that we have, because we can help to support mm -hmm. making that um, a real formal event to recognize our student success in high school. Um, so, I will get with you on that. Okay. What time is graduation? Eleven o'clock, right, Mr. Park? Yes. Eleven o'clock. That's correct. We don't need it. Huh? We don't need What? We don't have another school. Right. That's why. Yeah. That's why. Not a regular. He brought it up to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our next regular board meeting will be May 13th, so it'll be after graduation. So email Mr. Parker or reach out to him and, or Raina. Yeah. You can get all of her and just say, hey, I'll be a grad. That way we just know we don't want actually chairs on the stage. I will not. Be. I'll tell you right now. Let's say we're going to graduate. Yeah. So I'll be in which Or I better be in which <laughs> Wichita or hospital? <laughs> I might be in Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got anything? Okay. I guess you. All right. Legislatively, let me jump over so I don't repeat myself. We don't have any education funding next year currently. Um, and so the conference committees late on the last day came to an agreement, um, but the, that never went back to the floors of the House um, or the Senate. I think once they adjourn back around April 26th, 29th is when they're gonna, I think I saw veto days the 29th. Um, so I think it'll hit the floor and they'll probably, but. The scary thing is, is now you've got a few weeks of, <coughs> so if, if agendas get out there and they go to the floor to vote and vote it down, then I don't know. I honestly don't know where we're at then because I don't know if they can go back to conference committee um, since we're at the EO session or how that works. Um, <coughs> so nobody's hairs on fire. We got sped. We got the local option dollars taken out of being counted towards the state's contribution to the SPED fund, which is a good thing. Um, it's about 72 million in SPED next year. It's just not a long-term plan. That's what was trying to happen was a 
four-year plan to get SPED fully funded. It's just a one-year thing, but at least it's 72 million, so that's a good thing. Um, there's some policy in this bill that is not good, um, but I think it'll get signed if it gets voted and passed off of both floors. Um, the at-risk policies, there are some people that are very focused on at-risk knowledge. Um, and there are some people that are very focused on making sure teacher salaries are not at risk dollars are not used for teacher salaries. Um, I don't know how we employ classroom sizes. We will solve the teacher shortage problem um, because <laughs> we won't be able to employ all the teachers we have. Classroom sizes will double um, because we won't be able to. We get, I think, 400000 or so. We, we have to. At that risk. Yeah, $420,000. Yeah. So if we can't use that towards teacher salaries, um, how much of that we're going to be salary? <coughs> roughly. It's all based on. About 85%. Yeah. So, but like Molly so, Brum, Molly Brum Gardner is a teacher is a right, and at risk funds are above and beyond. And so paying for a teacher out of at-risk funds, even if they're doing things above and beyond, is not OK in her eyes, right? Yeah, really makes no sense. Literally, I think the only way you play that game and get around it, which is going to make things real interesting, is like you literally teach to create classrooms, home full of like, OK, well, we have at-risk classrooms now. Yeah. And every kid in that classroom is at risk. And so, and you're the at-risk teacher, and we're paying you out of that um, because. So then we go to the old one-room schoolhouse, <laughs> like you have first through twelfth grade. Well, yeah, in one mean, room you could, um, but that's I don't know. So seems logical. There's just some things there. One thing that did get passed is a pilot, a two-year pilot. It was going to be a one-year. It's good that it went to two years that hopefully we can get some things changed around that risk. So you have to create a third grade cohort of at-risk students. You have to track them for two years using assessments. You have to set goals for those students. And you can't stop tracking that cohort until 75% of that cohort reaches level three and four on the state assessments. Um, and if you don't meet those goals after four years, they can they will start taking at risk funds away from you. Uh, then you have to create another cohort that is K eight and do the exact same thing on that K eight cohort. So one has to be third grade because that's when state assessments start. And the other one can be K eight cohort. So if you do a kindergarten cohort, you're gonna use a local assessment because you don't give state assessments at that thing. And then you're going to track both of those cohorts. And then there is a punitive element to it that yep. if you don't reach your, reach your goals, then they will eliminate at risk funding. That sounds like a great way to get teachers to come to the state. Yeah. And Dan Kaysen just had a lovely article yes, about no. Kansas. Yeah. yeah, they're second in the nation of teachers leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, so the good thing about it is it's two years. So the hope is, is we can work some things. Kind of like the open enrollment thing, like we can work on making things hopefully better with that. I don't think it goes away, but we can hopefully work on um, making some things better with that. So I won't keep going. I mean, they passed, last thing is that I shared, I think, is that they passed the, so now you're going to be able to, which would have benefited Deerfield the last four years, you're going to be able to be funded on current year enrollment. So if you're growing in enrollment, you can get funded on that current year. You don't have to wait a year to get that money for those kids. So that's a positive when you're growing. Um, it used to be you could, if you were in declining enrollment, you could look back two years. So if your two-year number was larger than your current number, you could get funded on that second, that two-year number. So you, you weren't losing money as fast, and you could plan better for it with that and stuff. That's going away because now they're gonna do current year and one year look back. So if your enrollment goes down, if your current year number is lower than the last year number, you get funded on the last year number. If your current year is higher, you get funded on it. And for next year, to soften the blow to the districts that are in, been in declining enrollment for a while, 
they're going to allow those districts to average year one and year two. So you'll take the average of one, year one and year two, and you'll get funded on that number if your current year number is lower. So for Deerfield, that doesn't. The, the, the change right now is, is that now we can get funded on our current year enrollment and don't have to wait for a year with we've grown every year since 2009. So um, that's a positive there. So questions or anything there? Uh, I'll give shout outs real quick because I, I give negatives and I give positives. And so Bill Clifford and I had some conversations and and different things and he voted yes initially on a really bad bill for education and reached out to him and his response to me was well you're the only superintendent that I've heard from on this matter so I included him on an email with every superintendent he represents and let them know that they might want to reach out to Mr. Clifford and let them know how this is going to impact their district and different things like that and I essentially wrote the email like he wasn't on the email but he really was on the email and so it was and he voted no I did email yeah. him. Yeah, good. And so, and I appreciate that. Like, we have are able to have conversations and back and forth and, and everything, and he listens. And so, you know, I put out there, hey, but I also want to give him credit where credit is due when he, he listens and, and votes and changes. And so that's a positive with Bill is that he will do that. Um, there's some superintendents that tell me their senators, their representatives will not take a phone call for them, will not answer an email, will not come and visit them, won't visit them if they want to go visit them. Like, they're just absolutely party line. We're, we don't want to support public education. We want vouchers. We want this and that. And we don't care what you have to say and how it's going to impact your school district. Right? So we're fortunate in that. And of course, John Dahl's just up there rocking and rolling and, and doing his thing for education. So. You just have to remember to tell John thanks because he's you never have to send John an email and say, Hey, you better not vote yes for this or whatever, you know, and stuff. <coughs> Make sure, hey, thanks John for standing up for public ed and stuff. So um tour the bond on facilities, hailstorm update, any questions there? We're at about three point six four nine. We're going to have some property insurance discussions. Mm -hmm. So, um, EMC has, because I've been extremely nervous. I haven't, I don't know if I've projected this to you. I've tried not to, but if I have, I apologize. But I've been extremely nervous about if we were even going to get a renewal quote offer from EMC um, with the hailstorm, with the bus, with the boiler, with everything. Um, and so EMC has said they will give us a renewal quote. <laughs> um, so what that renewal quote looks like, we'll have to see, wait and see. Chip's working on that. Chip and I talk a lot. So um, we're also going to have another option. Um, so we're going to have two to compare and look at. So we want to make sure and it's going to be probably a one-time option year on the second option. I don't want to get too into the weeds yet because we don't have it all worked out, but I'll give you more information as we get it worked out. But we are going to have a second option um, just in case with the EMC option. So, but we're getting close to <coughs> closing that claim and being done with everything. So, which is a good thing. So, that's my goal is to have it closed and wrapped up so that it doesn't have to get transferred over to anyone else. So, um, the next two things, um, Jeremy went over and looked at the turf tank. It's a painting robot. Um, and so, been looking at that. And then also, we've talked about this. And so, robot motors, I just wanted to give you some things there. Um, about that. He also, when he was over in Holcomb, because they have them, so when he was over in Holcomb, he's able to talk with them and visit with them and everything. And so he's working on getting some quotes for one. Um, get started with one down there. And then go from there. Yeah. So. 
not as expensive as that. Yeah, they're not. Especially when you're, is that, you're considering buying a mower plus paying somebody to run it. Yeah. Like the cool thing with Holcomb, the way Holcomb has like their setup is like one day it's programmed and set up, it mows all the inside of the building. And then the next day it mows all the outside of the building. And what they've found is that it's best to just keep it go, like don't stop it then and let it grow back up tall and then start the process just over. Keep just keep it going. So then the next day it goes back out and cuts off a little bit that's grown, you know, on the inside of the field, and then the next day it goes back out to the outside and does the outside and stuff. So is that what you plan on using? Yeah. That's where he wants to start with the lawn, down there. Like, because he could, he said, the, I don't remember how much he said it was, but he could eliminate that whole area of man time and stuff and everything down there by just having the mower working on that whole section and stuff like that. So. If you could get one there and then get another one for the track. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be the ultimate goal. So, and then the turf tank, we're kind of going back and forth on that and stuff. So, it's. If you had soccer, it makes it a little bit better, but. Yeah. It says a year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't see how you make that yeah. punch out financially. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. You're gonna. It's like a thousand dollars every time. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Have you seen Mr. Moreno paint the football field? Like, does it cost? Us might be about a thousand bucks. Just messing. No, he does a good job. So, uh, yeah. So. Pay me half and I'll come back and do it. <laughs> <laughs> the first time is the worst time. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah. well, you get it done the first time, as long as you don't let your lines completely go away, it's not terrible. Yeah. Academically, I'm not going to get into a bunch of super details unless you guys have questions on this. Um, shared the initial building needs assessments with you guys there. Um, KSD, and Mrs. Ball knows about this. She got this. With the, I shared the email with you that we got from KSD about our kindergarten ready to snapshot stuff and everything. And so they're working on that plan and, and um, making sure. This will be a part of accreditation. Like kindergarten readiness is going to be built into Kisa Point 2.0. So it's not something that we can just say whatever with. It's got to be addressed um, because we don't want this to hang up accreditation or anything that in the future so they're working there really cool I want to say this out loud just we have two students learned about this opportunity and Mrs. Weberg worked with kids and given it and so we got two girls that are going to go to the Kansas Future Teachers Academy so you talk about growing your own and trying to get more kids into the teaching profession and things and so this is it it's an amazing week at Emporia State um, Tons of KSDE staff go there, like there's college staff, there's teachers that volunteer their time and they go there and put it all um, on and it's just an awesome time for the kids um, to connect with and you know a lot of those kids stay in connection they say and go to college. Cost a hundred bucks we're going to cover that like because it's so that it's not a barrier um, those type of things. So, uh, Symphony York and Rosa Alba are the two that have been accepted. You have to apply. It's not just like sign up and you get to go. You have to apply, so. Um, shared an opportunity with Mrs. Ball and Mr. Parker about a thing up in K-State at Manhattan that they're organizing around learning about discussion around recruitment retention, um, but then also getting to talk with K-State education kids about what are they looking for? What are they, when they're doing job searches and stuff, they're going to schools, websites, or whatever, like what are they looking for? What are the things that are important to them? What are they making their decisions on, right? I mean, if they sit there and tell you it's location, not a lot you can do about that, right? I mean, there's just not like that. But if it's other stuff too, then, you know, is there things that 
you know, trump that or not? Or is it location? Or is there other things they're looking at that would trump location? Type of things. So it's one of the one, only ones I've seen set up like this. That, so I hate giving K State credit, but well, like. I think it's <laughs> just right up KC Town, yeah. and I think they did a great job. <laughs> so, about <laughs> time they did some right. Well, they did a lot right. So, um, and then financial snapshots. Some of that's a mess, a little bit. Rain and I've got some stuff to do, but we'll get there. Um, the clash expenses was updated for you, so you can see that. That's something we try to bring you every three months. So, um, and then we added the bond account monthly summary. That spreadsheet that you saw last month mm -hmm. um, when we were talking, meeting with Hutton and them. Um, we're just going to put this in here and update it for you. So uh, you can kind of see that in a pretty clear. Raina did that. It's really nice. So uh, budget requests. So our budget process we went through with you. We had uh, Mr. Thomas. He was the winner on non-personnel request. I think he put in like 15. Um, and so, hey, use it if you got it, right? So, um, so going through some of those with him, and we'll, we'll be with him and talk about some of those things and how we do funds and what he's thinking about in some accounts lines and how we might move some money um, and different things like that. Um, some of it is just long-range planning items that we just need to get put in place um, to go there. The personnel area, Mrs. Ball in the elementary school through their building needs assessment um, had um, requested um, adding an elementary school interventionist and then, um, or if not adding an interventionist, adding two more pairs to the elementary school to help support. Um, and, and you can click on those sheets and it, it has that information in there. Um, and then we talked about this last month, but adding the middle school core teachers um, also, and so all of this is connected. And so, um, like I shared last month there, I think we need to identify <coughs> what's important, right, in terms of salary and, and things like that versus personnel, right? It's, we have a pool of money, and the more people you have pulling at that pool of money, Obviously, the less money you have to spread out, right? And so, if, if we kind of need to figure, see what's important there. Because if we are going to advertise for any of these positions, another middle school core teacher, an interventionist, anything like that, we obviously need to get those out and posted so that we can do those things. And then the last thing I shared there, oh, did we update this real quick? Something I don't know if you've noticed on the Kansas Cash Summary link, one thing we've added, Raina worked with us <coughs> on, is that far right column over there, which is the percent left. So that's the percent left in that, in that line, in that budget line. So in the general fund, um, you know, 30.2% six percent left in that general fund so you can i can you can sit there and go okay we have may and june we have two months left of our fund year so we have i don't know what's that percent two of twelve eight so yeah, yeah. roughly so that's just ten percent of our fund year left right a little over ten about ten percent of our fund year left and we got about 30% of our general fund. So, well, and also, um, we've changed the way that we do transfers. So we do transfers every month instead of doing it at the end so that we can make better decisions um, as to where we want to transfer our funds. And like 07 is negative. It'll always be negative because it's money that we request from the feds when we use it. So we can't. You can't recruit for right. an advance. Feds just don't give you money. They won't give it. They just spend the money. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that always makes me feel all <laughs> Right. And like supplemental general, right? We have a goal in supplemental general of where we want that balance to end at the end of the year based on what you've said. Oh, wait. Right. And so even though that says there's 60% left, like that's not going to go to zero because we have a goal. We're not running that account to zero. And so we're running that account to a specific balance that you want to carry over in 08. So we're doing those things. So we'll move money and do some of those things. But I just wanted to, that wasn't there. And so we've added that. Marina worked with Skyward. And so it just it gives you a little bit of look see there. Um, and then the last thing I added to, um, today for you was Raina gave these to me and I forgot to put them in there. So it's just a separate link. Hopefully it comes up. It's spinning on me. Was the district tax valuations for our properties? not expect I would expect this to continue to happen <laughs> going up yep yeah because they've done a terrible job in the last few decades of being anywhere near market value and so they got whacked by the state because you you're supposed to be within a certain percent of market value so we were already behind. And now we have houses selling for three hundred plus thousand dollars. That ten years ago we bought for which is killing us. Is this the year the tax the thing falls off? Yeah, this is our last year. For the town home. So we get twenty percent back this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll fall out of that. Well, we pay the full amount now, right? How does it back? Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Pay the full amount, but we won't get it back, so. Right. Yeah. 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 So, which one is this? Which one are you? Which one? The one that's valued at 38000 Lot four through six, block twenty. I hate these that have. No, no that's your middle. No, that's that's wall. No. It's in walnut. Oh, the walnut. pool's on walnut. It's yeah. Um, yeah. So is that the pool? That's the pool. <coughs> Questions? Oh, okay. All right. Old business. Duration of the strategic plan. Here it is. So now it's kind of. Remember, you're at the forty thousand foot view. So you're going to put some district goals in place, um, and then the buildings will take those district goals, and they're going to write some building goals. And those type of things we really fast bridge has been written um, and we'll update that um, and, and like I said there since we uh, 
or at the end of the school year. We're going to get the spring fast bridge data done, and then we'll have that data for the spring, and then we can um, rewrite the goal for the next year, bring that to you in June or whatever for you to see it. Um, but it's going to be a 10%. We will move 10% of students. What's going to change is the number of students that we have above benchmark, and then um, we'll keep it at 10% of students currently below benchmark. We'll move above benchmark. So. Um, and then on recruit and retain, right? We talked about recruit last time, filling 90% of open positions every year. On the retainment side, you can see there, look at C and D. I believe I addressed what you guys talked about last time. Um, and then I put in E or, yeah. C is an example, D. And I just wrote, I just made it like numbers. I don't know if this is where you want to land, how you want to do it, but we talked about the two or higher. Mm -hmm. And so that's the data is on D for last year. Last time I think we talked about 80 percent. Yeah. And then successful Spartan. Um, Click on that link, that'll take you out to a rubric that has an elementary, middle school, and high school tab. I've messed up and didn't link over on the right side on the elementary, middle school, but the high school is linked on the far right side of what no evidence emerging developed proficient exemplary means. So each one of these are hyperlinked because some of the importance of this is consistency. That everybody is looking at the same thing. Like when I'm, when we're talking about a kid, we're talking about Maritza, what is her love to learn? We need to have, everybody needs to have the same understanding of what love to learn is in Deerfield, right? And so people can click on that and bring that up. And um, uh, see that and read that. Oh yeah, okay, I remember what that is and then can assign a number, right? So I went over this with the leadership team. They liked it. We even talked about visiting with Skyward and seeing if something like this could be built inside of our Skyward system. And so then our teachers could go into Skyward instead of on the Excel spreadsheet and Google Sheets and put it into Skyward that way. And it's in Skyward versus outside. Maybe then family access you'd have access to it as a parent as well. Um, so, but this would work this way. Um, each one of them is linked. So like next year then, if this is the route you're wanting to go, next year, like you're, you're gonna have to set a baseline goal because we don't have, we can't set a growth goal when we don't have any data for what successful Spartan is. And so that's why, the example of that goal, USD 216 will work to create successful Spartans starting in September of 2024. USD 216 will have 60% of K-12 students averaging three overall by May of 2025. Right? Then you see where you land. Maybe it's 55% out of three. So then next year you get to write the growth goal. So then you can say, okay, we want to grow our successful Spartans by 5%, 15%. So you can change that goal and say, okay, we have currently 55% of our students are at three and six Spartans. We want to have, we want to grow 10% of successful Spartans. I don't know. That's just what we've talked about. Um, and these are teams. 
So like if you think about like like in the high school, there'll be teams of teachers put together. There'll be assigned kids that they have, and then they'll talk about them and rate them. So it's not going to be if you each were a teacher, you each wouldn't have to. And you saw seventy kids, you wouldn't each have to go through and rate all seventy kids. Do one of these for all seventy kids. You're going to be on a team of three teachers, and you're going to have thirty kids or whatever the number is. And so you'll set once in nine weeks, come together and say, all right, let's go through and talk about these and then put that in and then that's how you know, so. okay. Thoughts? Discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? The para handbook. My bad on this. I apologize. We, you got this two months ago. I was supposed to bring it back last month. Forgot. <laughs> so, I was going through my folder and was like, oh crap. I never got that. I haven't looked at it. You had this two months ago as a read item, and then I didn't read it. I forgot. Anybody else? Did anybody read it? Yeah, I can tell. You can kick it in on the ground. Table it. Yep. Table it until next month. Everybody's gonna read it though. Okay. Let us know what you think. There will be a right quiz. <laughs> How many pages is it? A lot. 20, 26. Um, we can oh, do double sided. Yeah. Can I have okay. a copy? And I can like, sure. read it on the lunch 26. break. 26. Okay. Thank uh, you. That's much I better. Can than it, I can send it. I can read it. I'll send it to print now. Yeah, print me a copy. 993. I can send it as a PDF and an email to you. I don't have it on screen. Okay. Yeah. I'm so passionate. I like to read a book over uh, digital any day. Graduation requirements. Can I give them talk to the class about that, right? Yes. Last meeting. And we went with, so like right now it's 21 and 25. So state's 21 in the old requirements. We're 25. The state in the new requirements is going 21.5. And we're going to go 25.5. So. Okay. But yeah, it's all the same of what was talked about. We just decided to keep those four elective hours or whatever extra to get to a little more than what the state requires. Yep. I'll make the motion. Mary and T. All in favor? All right, new business, KSB membership. I got booted too. Um, what happened? I don't know. It's just like kicking out and saying that there's a community error, um, but you can go back in and get back in. All right. Nothing crazy in there, right? Um, same old, typical. Same old, yeah. I don't know. So for Maritz and Robert, um, you've been through this, haven't you, Amanda? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Part of this fee is for legal services, so we don't keep a lawyer on retainer, and so I can call anytime that I need them and stuff, and they help with different things. I'll help with trainings, different things like that. Um, and then some of it is just opportunities for the board. They're your organization, the National Association of the School Boards Conference was this last week in New Orleans. Um, so we had a really good delegation down there. So 
and you have the state one in November. Um, I highly encourage you to take the opportunity to go to those. They're really good. All the policy updates come from Yeah, the policy comes from there. To make sure you align the retarded law that our legislators are doing. So we just need to approve their membership renewal? Yeah. yeah. I make that motion. Second. He's on a roll. Oh, oh, good. Good. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Carol, I still undefeated. Now we're rolling. Mm -hmm. Food safety plan. This has to, had to be done because of some applications Nicole and Kelsey were working on, and we needed to have an official food safety plan, like on file. I believe we need to put I have to double check. Yes. I think it has to be on our website. Yes. So it was that. made in August? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's sure that has it. I'm sure it's just okay. got our name plugged in there a few places because the A4 pages to read. Yeah. yeah. It's USDA. <laughs> I bet I read it when I was at the college when we were doing our culinary program. Start yeah, they got this from. Food service, state yeah. food service people and stuff. So, yeah. I'll make, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, yeah, that's easy. No, you're All in favor. Keep it the same. Think so. You got to switch it up to make sure Done. you're not falling asleep. All right. Sound system for the gym. This one probably won't be as quick. Okay. No. <laughs> Do we have this? Budgeted. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was in the capital outlay plan. What did we budget? Fifty. Yeah, I was thinking you said uh, something like fifty, sixty. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I always try to budget. Okay. I say no on the first one. And then ninety day warranty. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> That's who we buy all of our smart boards from. So they were naturally they're a big player in the state and stuff. So who? That KCAV, that's where all of our smart boards go. The one that's half again as much? Yeah. Second, show any warranty I can see. I don't remember seeing the bombs. I don't know. I know they've been around for a long time. The last, the last one. one. I'm like, leaving who it's at. I, I don't think. It, out it is not. Surely it can no. be that different. It's overwhelming at first. Digital board is very overwhelming at first, but once you're there, it's yeah. super well, easy. I, I just think, like, ours really is going to be set up and it's going to be just, oh, yeah. everything is just, okay. if you explain to him, here's how we're going to use it, we want music, we want my, for our mm -hmm. basketball games, like, yeah. it's, you set this here and set this here, and that's how it is. And I would think, I don't know. Yeah, it's not, it's not like Matt, but. I mean, like we talked like, about, Matt, he's good with you. Yeah, he, he's really, his whole thing was just, easy. would we have somebody to run this, you know? And, and and obviously when Eric's explaining how they do it in Hugoton, that becomes very overwhelming because yeah, they have that's, a that production insane. and stuff. So. <laughs> I can't imagine you're going to have to have somebody do there like at a game, like controlling the volume. Yeah. Like, he's just an unless hour you're away wanting too. to create a video. Yeah. Yeah. He's an hour away. And, yeah. You're also talking, like, this is all amped. With it's the equipment, with, equipment seemed with good speakers, mm -hmm. this hops one, and I only know this because this is what we have. Those, the QSC speakers are the same ones we have at our church. Also, um, but I believe they're a self-powered speaker. So if something goes wrong with your power source, you gotta go to the speaker instead of your box in the on wherever your amps at. I'm assuming being the crow's nest. Mm -hmm. You just got a lot better quality stuff with the southern one. And it's the cheaper bit. Yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. I know him. I worked with him when I was in Hugoton as a principal. And 
don't know that I've ever seen a bit of so many references. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, know. That, I told Jared, I said it was borderline a really good bit, borderline too much information. Yeah, this is too much. It's kind of like on the right sales pitch, though. Yeah, I mean, he, wrote, he wrote a write up about seeing mm -hmm. the place and then had the reference letters and had. It was more than just a. Here's how much it costs. Well, like, does he have a website? Because maybe that's what he's doing where. Things. Like, you know, you could go to a website and read customer reviews if he doesn't have that ability. Maybe that's what he's trying to do. Is he's sold me. Reviews, but. <laughs> okay, so I'll make. I'll make a motion to approve. Eric Miller. A second. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we got it all messed up now. Let's go high on that side of the table. It's the first time Vince has got her name on the sheet tonight. Take time. Okay. Any more discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Six seven. All right, consider us to approve the senior trip. How many kids are going on it? I think, I think it was like, like three or four. Yeah, I think at one point it was two, maybe three, maybe we're up to four. Okay. In the two to four range. Okay. Not a lot. Again. What's this, what, class of how many? Nine. Nine? Yeah. yeah. And I asked about the... Whatever it says in there mm -hmm. that they're over thirteen dollars. Yeah. So what for thirteen? We did so a hundred dollar day bill. Yeah, that we would pay for activities up to a hundred dollars per kid. Mm -hmm. Give them two hundred dollars spending money for the trip. Then we would pay for three meals a day and yeah, hotel, and driver and fuel, and driver and fuel. So they're over. $12.49. Which, right, which for four kids is not a big deal, but if it's 26 kids next year, well, it becomes a bigger deal. Clash committee kind of start talking about the senior trip and the future of it. I want to say I read that somewhere. They did. They did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just with the class sizes getting bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotta get expensive. Even just I know. So initially I was like, it's close to fifty dollars. But um, I thought that was because I didn't know if that's something we came up with and then Tyson pulled it all up. Yeah, it was something mm -hmm. that we came up with. <coughs> so I think we should stick to it. It's my uh -huh. that's a policy. Yeah. Should. Because if we don't, the next year it's only going to be twenty-five dollars per kid more yeah. times, times twenty-five. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, I will too. But yeah, I mean, I, that's the class committee's talked about it. Like, there's more, there's less and less of these things taking place, and somebody would use that as an argument to say. Well, that's why we should keep it, is because yeah. there's less and less. This um, conversation happened 15 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is that's, a dying this is one of the few thing things that we can offer the bigger schools. But... We don't get we don't anybody. We don't get anybody that says, "I'm coming to Deerfield because I'm going to get to go on a senior trip." Right. Senior trip. I have to say, I have to be honest. I don't hear like, "Oh, I can't wait till I'm a senior to go on a senior trip <laughs> in my house." So. I mean, that was a thing when I was in school. That was a thing when I was in school. To it. I <laughs> it's crazy. I think, yeah. I think you probably retained some staff when they were going to Florida and Hawaii and all that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they're like, hell, well, did you see some of the staff that was going to Hawaii, Hawaii too? Years. Every year? Yeah. 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 You weren't retaining the best staff. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what other school was sending their staff to Hawaii? <laughs> and Florida. Florida. Yeah, it's just crazy how well, this changes. I, mean, yeah. I was on the board. When they came in with that idea, and I'll be the first to admit, I was like, "Okay, sure, you can raise the money to go to Hawaii." 
And they did. We'll let you go to Hawaii. Yeah. Son of a bitch. We did restrict it to the United States, though. Like, you have it has to be with yeah, the United class States. Yeah, that class is kind of out you're there. Not, you're not going to Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> that was my class, by the way. Huh? That was my class. The first class? The one that went to Hawaii. Yeah. Well, we had several. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I was the first class. Yeah, that might just be the conversation. Yeah. yeah. But, so I don't know. My thought is you keep the dollar. Don't want to take that 13 out there. Spend the money. Yeah. Bye. Okay. You all good with that? Yeah. We need a motion on that to approve it? Yeah. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Whoa. <laughs> you know, all kinds of weird people. Amanda and Maritza, all in favor. Approved. Oh, yes. <laughs> Daily license to pay. I asked Tyson what other schools pay. Mm-hmm. We, used to, we, used, we to used to be the highest. We used to be one of the highest, and then a lot of people have made some changes in the last year, year and a half, and yeah. now we're back towards the bottom. So, so you're looking at a 140, 140, 145 range. If you're a long term, you get 200. It's a day. a day. Yeah. You do the same here. Yeah. 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 And so. Okay. So this is just for a daily sub rate. Yeah. Which I think garden. 145. For some reason Something sticks like out that. on me. I've tried to tell them to pay elementary sub a little bit more than yeah. the other ones. Yeah. But I've been told we can't do that. No. <laughs> It's 140 in Garden, but it's for uh, if you're fully certified. So you have to be fully certified. So you've got one. I think it's 130 if you're not. Uh, I know Holcomb's oh, 140 okay. to 145 for oh. some. There. Lakin, I know, went up. I think Lakin's in the 140 range. Yeah. Well, see, I was kind of wondering. So I say, if we go 150, even if we have a sub every single day, that's an additional 1400 bucks yeah. over one quarter. So will that be for our in-house subs too? Huh? Just our outside subs. Our in-house too? What? So like currently, <laughs> so like currently our two long-term subs, when they, when they're subbing, they get paid a daily sub rate. When they're not subbing, they get paid in a, in a pair. Rate. So she's saying, will they get the 150 when they're doing their daily sub? That's how we treated it. I would say yes. Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is this okay? Yes, so 150? Yep. Yes, sir. Somebody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Just the ball some, you, need, you need some training here and everything. Like, that's what KSB will tell you. Like, Fine. If your board's nice, the same person will make the motion and the second. The minutes <laughs> are real easy to do. No. And when everybody no. and the names stay in the same. It's not about being nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what this shows? <laughs> Everybody's engaged. There you go. <laughs> Great way to look at it. There you go. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? 6-0. See, we've been nice so far. I'm at 6 on everything. Yeah. We already did two. Or, oh, look at that. We're knocking stuff off. Let's go. We got 30 minutes. I'll move. We go into executive session with Mr. Eslinger to discuss classified certified personnel pursuant to non elected personnel coach under coma. And turn to the open meeting at how long do you need? 10 o'clock. I don't know what you're asking. Because um, then I factor it off of that. <laughs> so we can laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. 10 minutes. Oh, okay. 10? 10. Really? No. So like a real 10 or? A 20. Like 15. 
Get team right. with each team has all three side mounts. Yeah, and the tip is awarded. We'll come back. Are you going to do a break or no? Do we need a break? No, I'm just going to. 9.45. You need a second? Second. Any amend, all in favor? Six up. Thank you, Mrs. Ball. Thank you.
Yeah. All right. I'll make the motion for the Plymouth Contract in a row. I'll squad and Luke Hernandez. Adam Maru. Jessica Miller, Janet Miller, Amy Brown, and Rachel Dan, Amy Long, Vinny Plugger, Ron Caparicio, Carelli Padilla. Is that right? Carly. 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 Cheryl Smith, Kale Ward, McKinley Shear, Jennifer Weaver, Courtney Rubio, Lisa Merle, and Louise Rubio for their respective positions. And accept resignation via the U word. I'll second. I'm going to motion very second. All in favor? We go in for 10 minutes. Tyson and Brenna discuss negotiation on specific exception of employee employee negotiations in Tacoma and open at 10 of three. Second. All second. All in favor? Six. Okay, so we got the letter. Hold on.
the news. That's <laughs> a little bit soon. If I get into some of those, I'll drive. Keith and I were talking before, he's like, oh, we're chilling down like that. Like, yeah. that's what scares me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, these are the ones that always go off. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway. It's been fun, though. I can't believe it's over four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a bunch. Uh, my good news is just to see that storm shelter with walls, I guess. The easy one. My good news is um, I actually was a volunteer for the Reality U, and it was <coughs> amazing how a lot of these kids don't realize, as us parents, what we spend on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like kind of, it was, know, it was kind of, it was, yeah, it was kind of funny just to watch like the married couple with the kid constantly crying, and they were like not knowing what to do, and like they don't realize that's. Part of life. They didn't realize how expensive eating out five yeah. times a month is, and they're like, "Oh, oh." Or I, groceries. Yeah. They're like, "I'm not yeah, eating." That much. was the conversation July had with me after that night. Like, so how much do you really spend on this? Yeah. Or even like they had even um, life events. So some some of them got DUIs. Some of them were in car wrecks. So it was kind of like, yeah. Neat to it see was a how. married couple, so it was a boy and girl came up and they were saying something. And she's like, Yeah, he got a DUI. <laughs> I was like, Welcome to marriage. <laughs> nice. So it was kind of neat to see how each, you know, because mine was on the grocery side of it. Marilyn and I were in the grocery, so it was kind of fun to see. And I'm like, Hey, you know, this isn't just going out. This means even like if you stop at the gas station and you're going to go in and get a snack. Like you gotta incorporate that in as well. They're like, oh shoot, okay, that's like 15 times. <laughs> and then I'd even incorporate whatever their occupation would be. Like, all right, you're a lawyer, you're a nurse. Like you're not gonna go home and cook after a 12 hour shift or, you know, and they're probably like, yeah, you're right. Yep, we're gonna do this. I have a nice seat classroom getting done. Those are going to be so nice when they're done. And then the back room. The nicest kitchen in the town. I know. They ought to put back. Good enough for us. I'll be good enough for them. <laughs> we got oh, we drove to Salon this weekend to celebrate our care and teacher. Well, that was nice as a board member. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's a devoted board member right there. For the rest of you. It was good. I feel like I saw the only frustrating part of the little region, a little, a little location bias. See, I think, with the awards, but it is what it is. But it was a good time. Did they feed you good, Alex? Yeah, we had some chicken. So, <laughs> it was good. It was good enough. Had kids, they had kids, had like kids' meals, and they had like a bucket, and it had all these little goodies in it for them. And they, were doing and they knew what they were doing. Cool. Um, I like to see that studio elections in the high school are actually happening this year. I think, you know, um, it kind of makes sure that our studio officers are going to be engaged in participating in things. And so I like to see the competitiveness. I actually like to see how many kids are running for Stupo. Um, some of them are pairing up. You have two kids running for doing their campaigning together, which is interesting. So they're kind of learning about that. So I know that we've already started, the middle school did it last year. Mm -hmm. um, so it was already started there. So it's good to see that they're actually having to raise the bar a little bit. Mm -hmm. I shared that this morning with Kenley in our leadership meeting. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. It is awesome. There's it's some kids that I never would have thought would have ran for Stuco, so then like, I'm really excited. It's cool to see some of those kids. Like, Someone needs to come because there's stuff to learn in the PD. 
get B, that sucks. Bro. Yeah. yeah. There's still more, bro. Right? There's still up there sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. I came and helped the Sheriff's Department on Wednesday with the fentanyl presentation, and I was pleasantly surprised. How well our students behave. Were they engaged? Some. Not all, but they were all respectful. Not being jerks. You know, they did have some of them to touch me. And I was. I, I kind of played the jerk in the group, but it's a role I felt pretty well a lot of times. Because I pretty well just laid it out on the line what I was going to do when I got there if something happened and didn't really pull any punches about it. So I don't know, I hope we got through the Anything else? Jim, you have a special meeting next Wednesday, the 17th? 17th. The one that will determine your other and special I'm, meetings. Yeah. I'm more than happy, like, as you guys decide, like, how you want this to work. Like, I'm more than happy when you get things set up if you want me to lead any tours or do anything like that. I'm more than happy to assist in any way. I've reached out to people that I know are looking, are looking at positions and told them about the opportunity. I've had people call me and ask me. And so I'm uh, trying to sell it and tell them they need your opportunity for some of my so, so. But I'm more than happy with whatever you decide to do. If you want my help at anything, I'm more than happy to help with that. Yeah, I'm not going to be on the end of this one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All these meetings are not together anymore. Huh? All these meetings are not together anymore. Which I'm thinking. Thanks, guys. On that. It's not like that all the time. There's five Mondays this month. Oh. Mm. Uh, are you gonna want to yeah, I, thought, that, I thought we had I'm, one scheduled for okay. the We do. Well, we always, we always do the fifth Monday. Yeah. Because there's like two or three. Please cancel it. Please cancel it. Please cancel If we don't use that one for an interview or something else, that I guess we're going to be in any doubt. It was site council meeting the 22nd, too. 23rd. 23rd? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, I have it. It's, yeah, but it's, it's on. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I hope they All right, we're adjourned to another meeting. Is it a class? Well, not to have a meeting.